Hi everyone, my name is Milan and in this video I'm going to introduce you to railway-oriented programming. I'm going to show you how you can go from a design like this into something more functional like this. By the end of the video you're going to grasp the basics of railway-oriented programming and in some of the future videos we're going to explore the more advanced topics and use cases. We're going to start out with the email value object which is just a wrapper around the string representing an email. Inside of this value object we have a static factory method for creating the email and this static factory method returns a result of email. You can see that inside of the method we perform a few validations and at the end we return a new email instance. This is your typical imperative style of writing code in C-sharp and I'm going to show you how we can convert this into a more functional design with railway-oriented programming. The idea behind railway-oriented programming is that you can only have two paths in your application, which is analogous to the concept of railways, which is where the name comes from. The two paths that can exist are the success and the failure path, and what we're going to use to represent the success and failure paths is the result class. If I go to the definition of the result class, you can see that we have a success and failure property and this is how we are going to know which path we are currently on and what we're going to do is we're going to write extension methods on the result class which are going to allow us to create a functional design so to start out I'm going to go to the domain project and inside of the shared folder which is where our result is defined I'm going to add a new class which is going to hold the extension methods for the result class. I'm going to name it result extensions. I'm going to get rid of the unused namespaces and make this class public and static. And before we add any extension methods inside of this class, let's go back to our email value object and see what we have going on. You notice that we have three identical constructs in our code. We have an if statement with some check and then we return an appropriate failure result. The first check is that the string is null or white space. In that case, we return an appropriate error. Then we check if the email length is greater than some maximum length. And then we apply some simple validation for the email format. So how would we convert this into a functional design? Let's go back to the result extensions class. And I'm going to define our first extension method. The method that I want to create is going to be called ensure. And what it's going to do is it's going to take a result object, apply some validation, and it's going to ensure that that validation resolves to true. Otherwise, it's going to return some failure result. The return type of our method is going to be result of t, because this is going to be a generic method. I'm going to name it ensure, and I'm going to give it a generic argument of t. It's going to have the first generic argument of the result that is being evaluated which is going to be the result of t. And then we want to define a few arguments. The first argument that we need is going to be a function that takes in our generic argument and returns a boolean true or false value. So the way we would write that is by adding a function with the first argument of t and a return type of boolean. This is also commonly called a predicate, so that's how I'm going to name the argument. The last argument that we need is going to be the error that we're going to be returning inside of the failure result if the predicate evaluates to false. So I'm going to add a last argument with the type of error and I'm going to name it the same. So let's define the body of our ensure method. The first thing that I need to do is to check if the result instance is already a failure result. If the result is indeed a failure result, we are not going to evaluate the predicate because it won't matter, we are already on the failure path in our railway and we just continue down along it. So I'm going to say if result is failure, in that case we just return the same result instance. If the result is not a failure result, then we have a success result, because that is the only other possible option. In that case, we want to evaluate the predicate that we have provided, and we can do that by calling the predicate function and provided the argument, which is going to be the result value. If the predicate returns true, then the ensure method is successful. And we can just return the original result, which is going to be our success result, 
and we can continue the chain of execution. If we get to this line, then our predicate returned false and our ensure method failed, in which case we return a new result instance, which is going to be result failure of t, and we need to provide an error argument to specify which error occurred. So this is how we are going to return a new failure instance. To simplify the second part of the ensure method, we can use the ternary condition operator to convert our method to something like this. And I'm just going to move this into a new line to make it more visible. So if the predicate resolves to true, then we return our original result. Otherwise, if it resolves to false, then we return a failure result. So this is how we would define our ensure method. Notice that it starts with a result of t object, and it also returns a result of t object, which can be either a success or a failure result. Let's go to the email value object class and see how we can actually use this. Because we have defined our ensure method as an extension method on the result class, we have to start out with a result. So how are we going to do that? Luckily, on the result class, we have a static method for creating a new result. And I'm going to use the result create method to get back a result of string. And now that we have a result of string, we can call our ensure extension method and define the conditions that we want to move to a more functional design. So let's call the ensure method. So for the first condition, we are checking that the string is null or white space, but we actually need the opposite of that, that the string is not null or white space, in which case we continue along our railway, along the success path. And if the email is indeed null or white space, then we are going to return the email empty error. So how we would do that is define a function here. And I'm going to say not string is null or white space and specify the string. And the error in case we have a failure is going to be domain errors, email empty. So this covers our first if statement here that checks if the email is null or white space. And the way that we apply the additional checks that we have here is we just chain a new call to the ensure method. And again, we define our predicate and the error that is returned when we have a failure. So the other check that we have is that the email is not greater than the maximum length. So the way that we would write that is that the email length is less than or equal to the maximum length of the email. And if we have a failure, then we return a different error. In this case, domain errors, email too long. So this covers our second check, ensuring that the length of our email is less than or equal to the maximum length. And the last check that I have is for the email format. So I'm going to chain another call to ensure. And I want to validate that when I split the email on the add sign, I get an array back which has a length of two. So I'm going to say email split at the add character. And the length of the returning array is going to be exactly two. If that is not the case, then I'm going to return a failure result where the error is going to be in valid format. So with this, we can remove the free validations that we have here. And we are left with returning a new email instance. If I take a look at the result of the ensure method, you can see that it returns a result of string. This can either be a success result if all of the ensure methods pass, which means that we have a valid email or it can be a failure result containing one of the errors from the previous three checks. But our create method returns a result of type email. So what we need to do is we need to go from a result of string into a result of email. So we need to perform a mapping. This means we need a new extension method on our result class, which we're going to create now. I'm going to add a new method here in the result extensions class. The return type of this method is going to be a result of t out. I'm going to call this method map and it's going to have two generic arguments. One is going to be t in. t in is going to be the type of the result that we start the function with. And t out is going to be our second generic argument which is going to be the type of the result that we return from the map function. So what are the arguments that we need? We need to start out with our result of type t in. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to say this result of 
tn and this is going to be our result and I need a function that is going to map from my t in argument to an argument of t out so I'm going to add a function here which takes a t in and returns a t out I'm going to name it mapping function and this is all that we need to define our map extension method so what we are going to do here is we're going to check if the result of t in is successful in that case we're going to call our mapping function and return a new success result we are going to do that by calling the result success method which returns a success result and we're going to call our mapping function and pass in the value of the result with the type of t in and this mapping function is going to map the t in argument to our t out output value and return an appropriate success result otherwise we need to take care of the case when the starting result is a failure result but we still need to map to the t out argument so we're going to return in this case a failure result of t out but it's important that we keep the error on the original result object so we are going to do that and take the error on the result object and this completes our map method so let's review this quickly if the result is successful then we return a success result where we call the mapping function and we provide the value of the result to be mapped to our return value if it is a failure result then we convert it to our generic t out argument but we provide the original result error so that we preserve the error along the railway execution path before I show you how we can use the map extension method to complete our implementation I'm going to need you to smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos and now let's go back to our email value object and what we're going to do is after our last call to ensure we're just going to chain a call to the map extension method and we're going to provide a function that takes in a string and returns a new instance of an email and with that we can get rid of this return statement here and return the result of our method chain here and we can even convert this to an expression bodied method and what we end up with is a very nice functional design where we have a few methods chained together to describe what our method is supposed to do I want to highlight a few things that I like about railway oriented programming the first thing that I want to point out is that you end up writing less code than with the imperative approach that we had previously the second thing is that when you write your methods like this it reads very naturally you can almost take a look at your method and read it like a sentence let me try to give you an example of this we have a create method which takes in an email then creates a result using that email it then ensures that the email is not a null or white space string otherwise it returns an email empty error then it ensures that the email is less than or equal to the maximum length otherwise it returns an email too long error then it ensures that the email when split on the add character has a length of two otherwise it returns an email in valid format error then it maps the email to a new email instance this is the happy path through our method chain if at any point we encounter a failure result none of these expressions is going to get executed we're just going to fall through our method chain and return the failure result I want to show you how this looks like so I'm going to place a breakpoint here and start the application and we're going to hit this breakpoint and we're going to step through our methods and see what we have going on I'm going to send a post request from postman to register a new member and I'm going to specify an invalid email and we're going to fail on the last condition that checks the format of our email so I'm going to send this request to our API so we hit our breakpoint inside of the email create method and we first go into the result create method to create our success result now that we have our result of string we're going to enter our ensure method and check that the string is not null or white space if I step into the ensure method you can see that we are executing that condition and then we return from our ensure method then we are going to go into our second ensure call which is the one that checks that the email length is less than or equal to the max length 
this is also going to succeed and then we are going to go into our last call to ensure which is going to check that when the email is split on the add character the resulting array has a length of two this is going to fail as you can see here we are going to go into the result failure call and return a new failure result with the error of email in valid format this completes our happy path in our railway because now we have a failure result and we're going to enter the last call to the map extension method as you can see here and notice this time that the result object is a failure result you can see that is failure is set to true and error is equal to email in valid format in this case we are not going to be calling our mapping function to convert the string to a new instance of an email and we're going to be returning a failure result of email this is going to complete our email create method and we're going to go back to the create member command handler where we check our email result if it is a failure then we want to return this result from this command handler and we're going to return that error from the API I'm going to press continue and when we get back to postman you can see that I get a 400 bad request response with a type of email in valid format and a detail which is telling me that the email format is invalid now if I try to specify a valid email and send the request to our API again this time I added a breakpoint in the create member command handler I'm not going to enter all of these methods one by one I'm just going to execute everything and we're going to see what is the response that we get from the email create method so we're back in our create member command handler and we have the email result if I check it out you can see that is success is set to true and the value property contains our valid email instance and now we can continue the execution of our create member command handler which is going to add a new member to the database and as you can see we get a response with the ID of our new member I mentioned what I think are the two advantages to railway oriented programming one was we have to write less code another benefit that I'm going to add is of course the functional design that we end up with when we are using this approach to writing code and of course when I'm mentioning benefits I also have to say what I think are the downsides to railway oriented programming the obvious downside is the debugging of this type of code is really really bad you're going to have a hard time debugging this which was probably obvious from my example earlier where I tried to step through these methods probably in this case you're going to be better off actually writing some unit tests that are going to verify that your behavior is what you expect also another downside is that writing code like this adds to the complexity of the solution so probably somebody that is not familiar with functional design is going to have a hard time grasping what you are trying to do here but on the other hand we all probably use link you in our day-to-day -day job right so if you're writing link you expressions or queries with an ID framework then you are very familiar with this type of functional design link you is a functional library that's how you write the link you expressions you, you compose the various functions on the i enumerable or i queryable interfaces I really hope that you enjoyed this introduction to railway oriented programming let me know in the comments what you thought about this video we're going to tackle some more advanced topics and use cases in the future videos I'm going to show you how we can use this approach when our code has some side effects such as calling the database and also I'm going to show you how we can use this to simplify our API endpoints so make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss when I release the new videos about railway oriented programming and until next time stay awesome